Well, hello there. This is Venetic Kalu with Living Holy, and this is Devotional Hour. I, yes, I'm one of those who still do devotions. I don't know how many people continue with their devotions to God, but I am a devotional person. Now, I don't really do a lot of devotional works and books and things. That was my past life. I did a lot of devotional books, but now I just try to pull something out of the Word of God that is interesting to me, and I will meditate on that because Joshua says, you know, that we should meditate on God's words day and night. So I find something that interests me, and I will meditate on that. So my meditational devotional thought for today is... And I'm not going to give dates and times because, well, even I know um, YouTube will keep track of that, but this is for any season, any day, any time. So that's why I don't mention what day of the week it is or anything like that. So this is coming from First Chronicles, Chronicles, First Chronicles, chapter 17, verse 16. And now the whole chapter is pretty much interesting. This is David's um, contemplating or thinking about building a house for God. You know, that charge was given to his son. So Solomon actually built God's house and did a lot of building that I'm coming to know. He built um, different countries. You know, he was the king of the then known world. So not just Israel, but over the, the whole region and reg regions far and near around at that time. So he had a hand in bu building um, Italy and some other regions and places around that place, those stone buildings. Was we, the Israelites, were the masons and the uh, master builders around that time. So uh, David wanted to build God's house, and it's just a little background. And um, but God didn't give it to him because God said his hands were bloody, because you know he did he uh, he was in a lot of wars, and and he was not a, a man that he was a man after God's own heart. But it was just not, God just did not give it to him to build him a temple. So he gave it to his son Solomon. But anyway, seven, uh, Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 17, 16 says, And David the king came and sat before the Lord and said, Who am I, O Lord God? And what is mine house that thou hast brought me hitherto? That speaks volumes right there. I don't know how that speaks to you. Just, just, just contemplate on that for a minute. Let's just stop and think about that. Um, and to think about that, let me just say, Father God, in Jesus' name, give me wisdom right now to expound upon your words. Uh, David the King. One of your favorites, the apple of thine eye, where he said, where he sat before you and said, who am I, O Lord? And what is mine house that thou hast brought me hither to? That's to me shown humility. Thank you, Father. Thank you for answering my prayers and thank you for guiding my words. Being a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path as you light my way through this verse through this text in Jesus' name. So, um, what I'm seeing, what jumps out at me is he's saying, Lord, who am I? He's sitting in front of God. So that shows me that I can just go in front of God, my father, as I see him as a father, and just ask him questions. Father, who am I? And what is my house that you brought me hither to? You know, God has a, we all have a plan. God has a plan and a purpose for everybody. He says, I know the thoughts that I have for you, thoughts not to harm you, but thoughts of peace to bring you to an expected end. So God thinks great thoughts of us. He, we all have a plan and a purpose. And David is like sitting here acknowledging that he has a purpose and a plan. And he's like, oh my gosh, I, I have this thought to build God a house, but who am I? You know, he's taking that humble position, but who am I? You know, God, that you've even chosen me to be king. I was a boy. I've gone through a lot. I had to fight my way through to be to get my kingship. Even though you 
spoke it over me, even though you chose me. So that goes to show me right there that even though we are chosen for something, there is still a fight. There is still a battle. So we have to ask God to give us strength for the battle. Strength to eat and, and that, that give us a fighting spirit so that we can get what he has for us. Because as much as he purposes and has stuff for us, there are other forces, unforeseen forces, I'm not even talking about through people, just unforeseen forces in this world that were after Jesus on the, you know, that put him on the cross. There's these unforeseen forces that don't want us to get God's blessings. Because remember, Satan was God's friend, Jesus' friend up in the heavenlies. And he got jealous way, way up there. He got jealous way before time. They were fighting. There was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against Satan and his angels. So there was this, a war for the blessings, a war for the seat. That Satan even had the nerve, the gall to come down here. I'm going to be like the most high. I'm going to take my seat on the sides of the north. I'm going to this and I'm going to that. Hmm. So if he's fighting against God, the God of the universe, the sovereign God, how much more would he fight against us? So we have to keep that in mind. He's a defeated foe, but... He's going to try to take out as many people as he can. He's going to try to keep us from getting our blessings. That's the part I'm going to focus on. So I gave you that backstory. So, you know, that's what the fight is about. It's not a human fight because we fight against blood. We don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against powers and principalities that are unseen. Okay? So King David is like, God, who am I? Because he know the fight, you know, God, what God has for him. And then the fight that he had to even get to this first part. And now he has the thought to build God a house. That's no small thing. So he's like, okay, God, so who am I in my house? Who are us? We. That we get to build you a house. Oh, my God. I'm favored. You know, so he's realizing his favor with God. He's acknowledging that, you know, he could even sit down and talk to the God of the universe. How many people get audience with him? But we do have audience with him. He's only a phone call away. Not literally, but a prayer away. We raise our hands in prayer. So he's um, a prayer away from God. And he could just talk. God sits above the dome of the earth. So he's as closer than we've been taught to believe. So... I just want to remind you and remind myself, I'm speaking to the choir here, that God is nearer than we ever believed, than we were taught. So we have that, we can take audience with him at any time, but we have to have a contrite heart and come in our humility. Excuse me. Yes, a blue cup. I could have got a glass, but hey. Um, so that just reminds me to be humble and grateful. Grateful and humble. Those two words go together. Grateful because God gave, he, you don't have to be alive. I think we're living in the greatest time in history. All this technology, you know, it's just, we got it going on. More so than our ancestors and forefathers and those before us, even in the early 2000s, they couldn't even conceive you walking around with a phone in your hand with a camera on, talking to anybody, anywhere. all over the world. We have connections. We are living in the greatest time in history. I am grateful to be alive just for that. It took me a long, at first I thought the phone was of the devil. So it took me a long time to even get into the phones. So I just thought it was of the devil. But now I realize, wow, just appreciate, appreciate, be grateful, you know, look beyond, look beyond and just welcome. We have to be welcoming and inviting. And that takes gratitude. That takes grace. That takes um, just peace, peace of mind, peace of heart. You know, we have to look to the Prince of Peace. God, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. God is the Prince of peace. So we have to pray for and accept and receive his peace. That's the only way we're going to make it. 
in these strange days and times that we're living in. Even though these are the best of times, these are also the worst of times or the strangest of times. So we just have to look for the good, seek the good, and do good. And good will be added. So basically, that's being righteous. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And then you can say like David, who am I? that you blessed me with a million dollars? Who am I that you grew my company to be a million dollar company? Who am I that you brought me into a beautiful home? Who am I that you gave me good friends that will pray for me, that will have my back? And I have theirs. We have mutual um, um, peace, mutual friendship. Some friendships are one-sided. So we have mutual friendships, mutual love. A mutual relationship with a man or a mutual relationship with a woman, you know, so, you know, and, and great jobs. We love our company. We can grow our company and keep it. You're not growing it and, and try to get out of it. And then somebody, the next person to buy it from you, wreck it. I've seen those as well. So we just have to be thankful and live a life of gratitude and grace and kindness towards each other. And pray for favor so that we too can sit in front of God in all humility as a friend and say, who am I that you blessed me with all this? Because not everybody who works for stuff and who works ceasingly is blessed and gets to have a lot around them or even have the peace. Ecclesiastes say, um, you know, talks about um, being able to enjoy your wealth, enjoy your food, or in, even just enjoy your job. You know, you can eat the fruits of your labor, be merry, and enjoy the fruits of your labor. That is a blessing. Not everybody have that peace and that blessing. I've been around some people who are very blessed but have no peace whatsoever. I'm thankful that I have peace. Sometimes it's fleeting. But for the most part, I have a lot of, I have an abundance of peace, you know, and sometimes I can irk people because you come and singing and dancing and praising the Lord because you have a joy, you have joy, I have joy and I have peace. I've always been the type to not let stuff bother me too much and let stuff roll off my back like water off a duck's back. So I try to keep, I try to stay there. I try to stay in that mode. So I can keep my hair. I can keep wrinkles off my face. So I, whenever I see them coming, I'm like, oh, Lord have mercy. I'm showing my age. Time to be at peace. Time to, to chill. Take a chill pill. Okay? Time to take a chill pill. And I know how to do that very well. But anyway, um, so we just know when we are blessed, we just have to pray and ask God to give us the peace of mind and the joy to enjoy the blessings that he gave us. Come to him in humility. But more so, David recognized who blessed him. Go to God and thank him for your blessings. Who am I that you've blessed me? Okay? Who is my house that you blessed me with a house, with a family, and then to bless my whole household that we can go even further in life? So... I'm, that's where I am. That's my de devotional thought for today. And that is my thought um, for all of us, anybody who listens to this, that we recognize the source of our blessings. Then we are humble and recognize our, and can be hu humble before God. And that our blessings don't give us the big head, as we used to call it back in the day. She got the big head. She thinks she all that. But then you would you would come back and say, no, you think I'm all that. No, but in truth and in, in, um, in all humility, you know, you don't want to get the big head. You want to stay. Don't let the foot of pride come against you and kick you in the butt. You want to meet, remain humble before God and grateful. And gratefulness and pride don't go together gratefulness and humility does. So let's stay in faith, stay in gratitude, and stay in humility so that we can receive from God's hand, but
but more so we can just enjoy life, enjoy the abundance of what he gave us.